Alright, so I hope everybody's doing okay. We've got an interesting example today. Look, we, we often work with machine learning models and we uh, make very key inferences from them. Uh, but it would be nice if we could deploy them on a, let's just say, a website, right? So that the end user would find it easy to access and use them rather than having to deal with what's happening on the back end. So what we're going to do in this video is set up a machine learning model in a Flask web application and then we're going to access it from a website and see if we can um, use it to make inferences on our images without having to worry about what's happening on the back end. So let's go ahead and see how this works. This is the structure we're going to work with. We'll have an index.html homepage that we're going to set up and this is basically where we're going to take input from the user where we're going to feed in our images and send them to the back end the flask web application which is the yoloapp.py file it's a python file and it's going to process that input image and it's going to pass it to a machine learning model and it's going to make some detections from that image um, we are interested in detecting people in an image so we're going to basically have uh, people detected in an image we'll probably make a bounding box a, a rectangle over uh, all of the people in the image and we're going to pass the resulting this annotated image to the results page result HTML and uh, which is essentially just going to display the original uploaded image and the resulting image after the detections okay so that is the the structure that we're wanting to work with. So let's go ahead and see what the code looks like for all three of them. Let's start with the input index HTML. Uh, the input index HTML is a fairly straightforward uh, code where we are only looking at a blank page but uh, what's important, uh, notice there's a there's a header and then there's a body in this uh, HTML code. What, what we are really keen on is understanding what's happening in the body and the most important aspect is this uh, line 13 to 16 where we are allowing for an input image to be uploaded by the user we have named it as file and you, we will see in our python code how we're going to use this file name and there's a button there upon clicking we're able to submit the uploaded image now where does it go from this home page it goes to the Flask web application. Now let's see what we do with this uploaded file in the Flask web application. How do Flask web applications work? What does the code uh, look like? What does the code look like? So let's go to the, uh, and remember this is the YOLO app.py. This is where our Flask web application is. So let's look at this Python code YOLO app. Um, notice this is a fairly straightforward code. It's not, it's not very extensive. It's straightforward code. Now these two are just functions, but this uh, this home is where our uh, Flask application bulk of the code is, right? So it's a fairly straightforward code. These are our own uh, defined functions, predict on image, predict on image, and allowed file. So we'll see what happens there as we, as we go to these functions in our home uh, core function. But just to give an overview of what's happening, we have a bunch of imports up top, and then this is where we define our model the you only look once the yolo model we are working with the yolo v8 model and this dot pt the pytorch file contains the model as well as the uh, the trained weights of this model this is this is taken off the shelf it is trained on the coco data set the data set has many objects and our object of interest is people persons we'll see how that comes into play but we initialize the model here and we store it in, in the model variable. Uh, what ha so this really means that we need access to this, uh, these, these weights file, right? Uh, we need access to this uh, PyTorch file containing the trained weights, YOLO V8, and, and we do have it, and we do have it. Let us list what we have in our folder. We have image one, image two, readme, and there we have it. So we have the weights file with us. Notice there's also a templates folder. So let's go to templates folder, just uh, very quickly see what's in there. And we have the index and the result HTML files in the templates folder. Uh, that is the key structure that we are working with. So we have to place our HTML files, these two files, index and result. They have to be in a folder called templates. Uh, this is how we have them. Notice templates has index and result HTML. And 
here is where our web flask app is and our weights the trained weights are also available here we have some testing images that we would uh, see so coming back to this uh, what else do we have here we've got this mo model setup we defined some allowed ex extensions of the input images then we define initialize the app here flask okay um, we set up the routes the get and the post methods but let's get down to what really happens around here look we are interested in the input file uploaded by the user and we keep on checking whether or not this file is there uh, when we when the user goes ahead and clicks the uh, the upload button and tries to basically upload a file so uh, we've put up some checks so if the file is not in the request files okay we render the template which is the initial home page there's also another check um, here if file name is uh, is empty there's no file name then again we render the index the initial home page but more importantly this is the file that the user uploaded right so we're requesting that file and store it in the file variable so this is the that bridge from HTML to the flask app remember here we had file set up so whatever he uploaded was was kind of like stored in a file name so we use that to basically bridge or walk from HTML to Python so this is how we have access to what the user uploaded okay and once we have this access once we have what the user uploaded once we have the image we're just trying to check its name there's a file name method associated with it and we also check pass it to allowed file function see if it has the relevant extension uh, we don't want to work with let's say anything other than these extensions don't want to work with an mp3 a sound file or something we just want to work with these images and also um, if it exists right so if file is also checking if it exists so if it exists and has a valid file name we go ahead into this uh, into this if condition and we do one thing right away we use the stream method to access the contents of that file and we call the predict on function and what happens in this so we've got this stream set up and we read that stream we read those bits convert them call a byte array into them convert them to a byte and store it as an array so this is a numpy array and then we also call a image decode method with uh, unsigned eight uh, integers unsigned integers right so essentially we're converting this the, the user's image into a format that is more appropriate for us to work with in Python we store that in the image variable and this then gets passed to the model that we had defined earlier here in line 8 so this gets passed to the model and we call the predict functionality on that image we specify which class are we interested in the zeroth class the zeroth class corresponds to people persons in images um, the model is trained on the coco data set which has a huge number of uh, different classes so class 0 corresponds to uh, people class 5 corresponds to buses right so you could detect buses if I had set this to 5 so we're setting this to 0 we're interested in people also define a confidence threshold that the model should be at least 50 percent confident on its detection uh, before validating it as a detection okay so we make these predictions store these predictions and results and then we iterate over them and we plot a bounding box for every prediction we don't want to see what confidence there are we're just sure that it's greater than 50 we're not interested in how solid the confidence is so we're not going to plot the confidence we're just going to plot bounding boxes on our result on our on our original image and we're going to store this in im underscore bgr so then this is our annotated image so this is what is the the annotated image containing boxes of people uh, detected in, a, in the original image and this is getting returned from predict on image so if this is getting returned then notice in line 39 predicted image has our results it has our uh, annotations it has our annotated image so predicted image is what we now want to send from the application web app to the results page so we will send the predicted image to the results page but before sending it we're going to call an im encode which will, which will store it in a buffer and going to have a base64 encoding and then the UTF-8 uh, decode 
on this so this ensures that the images are properly handled and are good to go to be res presented in our HTML file uh, this means that our predicted image eventually gets uh, stored in the detection IMG base 64 variable and this is the variable that we are passing to when we render the result uh, template when we render the result template we pass this exact same variable to the result HTML we also pass the original image um, we have access to the original image we again seek the uh, image data encode it uh, in the relevant uh, encoding set up a UTF-8 decode and make sure we store it in original image and then we also pass this so in our result HTML we have essentially passed original image and the resulting image which has our detections boxes on people so then what that means is we can now go ahead and look at what's happening in result HTML because now we have two images sent in here so you should expect two variables in results page HTML right so original and detection now if we go to result here um, and we forget the head uh, of this HTML for a moment we can mess around with it later but let's more interested in the body notice we have these two variables corresponding to the original and the detected image this is how we handle them this is how we handle these images so essentially we're just displaying those two images right away now um, we've discussed this extensively let's go ahead and see if we can call uh, this and implement this and see how it looks like in a, in, a, in a browser the command that we are keen on is this so it's a flask app yes flask double dash app the name of the app yolo app dot pi and we want to run it but we want to host it on 0 0 0 0 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 so what this allows us to do and this is basic functionality for flask it's an app you run the app but the reason why do we do the host uh, keyword here is because we want this to be accessible to anyone on our network rather than just accessing it on our own computer anybody could go to an IP address of this computer and access our app and use it for their own functionality rather than having to worry about what is the code at the back end so they would not have access to this they would be able to interact with our application okay so let's go ahead and run this and see and test a couple of images and see how it goes um, okay this takes a couple of seconds okay there we are so the, the, the applications up and running this is our local uh, let's just say address um, this is not something accessible to everybody else out there this is something on uh, accessible to people on our Wi-Fi on our network right so we can go ahead paste this 192.168.10.5 uh, to anybody else on this on this network I'm just going to go ahead and um, paste this here uh, and uh, just check it so there it is it, it you could see this is the uh, HTML home or the index home page the index HTML right away this is what we had we gave the user to choose a file and upload it we gave him um, if you look at the index HTML one more time we gave them an option to choose a file and kind of like give an input and then there's a button associated with it to upload it this is what it was so let's choose a file let's choose a file let's choose this file click open and upload it this should is now processing in the web app and then the result will go to the results HTML which is this so we have the results HTML now we have the original image uh, and then we have the detection image available for us and these are the boxes corresponding to the classes that are detected and we only set out one class the class 0 the person class so it has detected three people in this uh, in this image so this is a, an example how we could uh, we could work with let's have a quick look at what happens on the console when that was processing so the console prints this and this is coming from the YOLO model it gives you this information by default you could set verbose as false to avoid this if you don't want to look at this output in console it's a uh, it's good information it gives you an idea there are three persons detected and um, and kind of like summarizes what's happened on, on the back end in terms of uh, how the YOLO model has worked so this is in a nutshell the application that we want to work with remember this IP address is accessible to everyone within your network not just anybody out there uh, in the world just people within your network and this is a good way 
uh, for anybody to work with uh, their functionalities, look at their uh, applications or their images, rather than having to worry about what's going on at the back end. Right, so it works on, on, on different images. Again, it has detected two people uh, successfully. All right, thank you so much. Like, share, and subscribe. And I will be looking forward to your comments in the comment section.